Who is the one guy that you think could have a breakout year and a guy that's kind of flying under the radar for the Eagles? Who's that one dude? By the way, I'm going to get to those those NFL top those top picks and quarterbacks here in a minute. Give me one Eagle guy that's flying under the radar. It's really great. All right. Let me get back to where I was going with this. I want you guys to pick one guy that's not a frontline star on the team that you're going to keep an eye on this year. I'm going to give you my guy here in a minute. Who is the one guy that you think could have a breakout year and a guy that's kind of flying under the radar for the Eagles? Who's that one dude? By the way, I'm going to get to those those NFL top those top picks and quarterbacks here in a minute. Give me one Eagle guy that's flying under the radar. Marcus Epps, Jalen Rager. God, you're only hoping. Milton, Goddard, Pascal, Quez, Milton Williams. Wow, you guys haven't named my guy yet. Yeah, Rager, like, thank you, Philip. Wow, you re- hey, Philip, you fooled me. <laughs> hey. Quez, Gainwell, Miles Sanders, Dean. Epps is going to have a lot of eyes on him. He surely is. Josh Sweat. Love it. There it is. Chris? Chris to follow. Chris, do me a favor. Hit the like button, please. I'm with you. TJ Edwards. I got to tell you something about where TJ Edwards' mind has to be right now. Let me tell you this about TJ Edwards. So they drafted Nicobe Dean to upgrade the linebacker position, right? If you're TJ Edwards going into the 2022 season, aren't you doing this right now? They just think I'm a good player. They don't think I'm exceptional. They don't think I'm anything. They just think I'm solid. They just think, what, what does Ronald say? He's steady. Man, my entire objective would be this. Every time the Kobe Dean or anybody else steps on that field as a linebacker, I am going to outplay every single person that plays the position of linebacker on this Eagle team. And I am going to, at the end of the year, when everything is said and done, have had the best year of any player in the group. That, to me, is the guy that I love on my football team. I played like that. I had a guy next to me in Jerome Brown that was everything, and rightfully so. I saw him in a game against Oklahoma destroy a football team. I mean, I've never been on a field with a guy, professionally or collegiately, where a guy just destroyed a team single-handedly. 20 tackles, an interception, a sack. He broke Aikman's leg. Five tackles for losses. A blocked field goal. Eight TFLs. I, I, I was in, and we're, I'm looking at him going, you got to be kidding me. It was so dominating. We made T-shirts with Jerome with his pants down, taking a shit in an Oklahoma helmet. And we all wore him out <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. He systematically destroyed. He broke Troy Aikman. The reason Troy Aikman was a first-round draft choice is because Jerome broke his leg in Norman, and he transferred to UCLA. Then they put Jamal Holloway in, which is even more of a nightmare. Just destroy. But, man, you know what I wanted to do? And I did. I wanted to outplay Jerome, and I did. More tackles, more sacks, more tackles for losses, more solo tackles, more hits on the qu- – I had them all. And it made me a better player. 
I mean, if I can do things that he was doing, I knew that I would have a great year. He was my benchmark. So if I'm TJ Edwards and they're saying all this about N'Kobe Dean and I outplay him, what are they going to say about me? That's how you get competition. Like here, I'll give you another one. So if I'm Devontae Smith and I see A.J. Brown getting all that money, do you know what I'm thinking to myself? My number one objective is to have more catches and more yardage than him and more touchdowns than him. I want to completely outplay him. Do you know what that creates? That creates competitive edge on your team. You've got this at multiple positions. If I'm Jordan Mulata and I look down the line and I see Lane Johnson and I see how everyone looks at him as an all pro and a pro bowl guy, I want to outplay him. I want to be better than him. If I'm Hardgrave, hey, I'm going to outplay Fletcher Cox as much as I possibly can. Look at all of the, hey, James Bradbury. James Bradbury has to be in the Eagle secondary doing this now. Darius Slay made the Pro Bowl last year. I'm on a one-year deal in Philly. Not only am I auditioning for the Eagles, but I'm auditioning for 31 other teams. And I'm going to go out, and every single time that I step on a field, because people said last year was a shitty year for me, and it was. Let's be real. He wasn't good last year. The year previous to that, he was a pro bowler. So he's got pro bowl capabilities. Agreed. Players can have bad years. We see it all the time, especially in bad situations. So if I'm James Bradbury, my number one job is outplay Darius Slay. There are so many great battles internally for the team. All friendly. I'm not talking about talking shit to each other. I'm talking about wanting to be as competitive as possible. Jerome and I used to fight over tackles in film after a while. I got that tackle. No, I got that tackle. Butch Davis used to go crazy because we would sit there and go, but it was competitive in a friendly way. Competitive in a friendly way. GT says, Sills, what do you think about Terry McLaurin not showing up to mandatory camp with the commanders? GT, it just goes down the line of what's going on with the chaos in that organization. You got a wide receiver bitching about the money that's being thrown around right now. And he sees the money. You just had a defensive coordinator act like an ass in a locker room. And you brought in a guy who's got questionable issues in the locker room with Carson Wentz. If you're an Eagle fan, like I said, You couldn't ask for a better situation. Your top wide receiver offensive skill set guy is holding out. Your coordinator's made a tool of himself. And you got a quarterback you're not sure of. What more could possibly go wrong in Washington? They haven't even played a game yet. If I am Ron Rivera, Ron, dude, you need to clean this up. The Washington commanders are a train wreck and your owner's going to have to testify in Washington for an unhealthy work environment. (laughs) How do you win? How can you be competitive when shit runs downhill like that? The commanders, man, I mean, right. Name me one thing good about them that you've seen over the last two years. Now they want to get a new stadium. Of all the teams that don't deserve a new stadium, they're number one. They have sucked under the ownership of Daniel Snyder. They've not won. They've been like the Raiders of the East Coast. The Raiders are at least starting to win now. You can say whatever you want about John Gruden, but he did right the ship. Okay, he did. And the worst organization... Next to the Jets has been the Washington Commanders. The the, the Commanders. Right, the name sucks even. I do dig the helmet. 
Okay. Which hey, King, it, it's a, it's an awful it's an awful place. How in your right mind do you think that that place is going to be in line to think about focusing on winning? That's why again, that's why when I bring up the Del Rio stuff, I'm not talking about the political angle of it. I'm just talking about the dumbass angle of it. You don't need anything else to take you off of your objective. You're in that building to win football games. Not elect people or to talk about what's going on in Washington. You are not there for that. You know that line when uh, Laura Ingram said to, to LeBron, shut up and dribble? It's almost appropriate. Shut up and do your job. That's what she should have said. Just shut up and do your job. You're hired to be a basketball guy. Now, look, you want to be a political guy? Do it on your own time. Fine. Don't bring it into my locker room. Just do your job. Don't make our jobs harder. Dude, the Eagles. Hey, watch this. I think of the Cowboys. I think of chaos. I think of the Rams, I, everyone wants to play in Los Angeles. I, everybody wants to be a Ram. They're throwing money around like they're in like the kings of Egypt. Everyone wants to play for Brady and with Brady. Philadelphia is now a place, watch this, it's cool. A.J. Brown's jackassing around. There's competitive balance. Everyone's competing with one another internally too. Teams another year older. Look at how Nick Sirianni has kept all the BS. Not that there was any kind of internal issues or anything. Hey, look, it'd be a whole different conversation today if that team had only won six ball games. I I completely get that. Okay, really, East Side, Jalen Rager is probably the only negative conversation that we have about the Eagles today. Ronald, culture is so important. Look at the Washington commander culture versus the Philadelphia Eagle culture and ask yourself if you were a free agent where you'd want to play. (laughs) It used to be a place to want to play with Washington when they were the Redskins. Remember Joe Gibbs? How everybody and free agents wanted to go play for the Redskins back in the day? Remember that? Free agents wanted to play there. Wilbur Marshall wanted to play there. It was a destination for free agents. They won Super Bowls. I mean, they were spectacular in how they would take reclamation projects and put them in the building. It was really well run. Now, you, if Washington is one of the teams that you're thinking of going to, You must not have a very good career going for yourself. Chris says, I don't see a roster spot for Rager. Oh, well, I didn't see a roster spot for Derek Barnett either, but they found one. You know what I mean? Trust me, if you're drafted by Howie, you have a chance and you have a lifeline to remain there. Philip, it's a, it's a comment and it's an analogy. Don't make more of it. It's not. It's just a, a comment. Holy cow! Crazy. They're not cutting Rager. I don't think they are either. All right. NFL today came out with the top ten. Actually, top thirty-two. I'm not going through that though. And the top quarterbacks that will be taken in the top 43 picks. I got that list next. I want to hit on it, some conversation about it. A little bit on Jalen, because here are the guys that are going to be the top quarterbacks. Okay? Hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show.